Can you believe it's not even a year since ChatGPT entered our collective consciousness, making AI part of everyday speak? How do we ever live without it, some are saying, whilst others are openly cursing it. Love it or hate it, AI in all its forms is here to stay. So best us business owners do our best to wrap our heads around it. It's another Artificially Intelligent episode 653 of the 14-year-old award-winning Small Business Big Marketing Podcast. Well, I say welcome to a small business marketing show where successful small business owners share their souls to take your marketing straight to the lead. Now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Reed. And welcome back to your weekly dose of non-human generated marketing. I'm your host, Timbo Reed. I'm human, I think. And I have an insatiable curiosity for uncovering marketing ideas that help businesses just like yours to grow. And I do that by having a weekly in-depth chat with a successful business founder that has walked the path before us. You, infinitely more importantly, are a motivated business owner ready to crank out some great marketing to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire it absolutely deserves to be. As per usual, team, there's marketing G-O-L-D dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. A very warm welcome to Chaz, Sean, Marty, Sue Ellen, Jess and Peter, all who've recently joined my Patreon. Thank you guys for supporting the work I do for small business. Hugely appreciated and it enables me to bring you more great content week in, week out. If you're yet to join Check out patreon.com forward slash marketing podcast. I'm posting new content weekly to help grow your beautiful business. It includes marketing ideas, productivity tool reviews, videos of past interviews, plus a bit of behind the scenes action to keep things interesting. The Silver Tier, it's a tax deductible 47 bucks a month and it will pay for itself in no time. You can even trial it for free for seven days with that obligation. Head over to patreon.com forward slash marketing podcast. I'd appreciate your support. Now, let's get that AI discussion underway. Well, as you're probably experiencing yourself, AI continues to be the talk of the town. You only have to visit any social media platform to see friends and colleagues boast about what they're achieving thanks to their newfound best artificial friend, the amazing images they've created, and the crazy amount of time they're saving by using the likes of ChatGPT. There is no doubt AI is saving us all a bunch of time and enabling us to get shit done that we never dreamed possible. But are you stuck on the AI treadmill? Or are you being super smart in the way you're using it? Well, today, myself and past guest from episode 630, Troy Dean of Agency Mavericks, continue the AI discussion. Today, we discuss how smart business owners are using artificial intelligence. We talk about the interplay between human and machine and the importance of being a good prompter. Whoever thought that was going to be a skill? I share the results of a research study I did amongst my Facebook tribe and LinkedIn followers. Thank you if you contributed, who revealed how they're benefiting from AI. And we talk about how to get started with AI if you haven't already. Very, very interesting tip from guest Troy. And just a reminder that all Silver members of my small business owner membership can watch the full video of this interview, plus access a bunch of other marketing goodies at patreon.com forward slash marketing podcast. Righto, let's go meet Troy and talk artificial intelligence. Troy Dean, welcome back to the Small Business Big Marketing Podcast, my friend. Thanks for having me, Timbo. I appreciate it. Now, buddy, you were here six months ago. We, we had an AI discussion. Uh, which got people thinking. And six months is a very long time <laughs> in AI. It's a decade, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I reckon for every one human week, AI would have to be like 12 months. Yeah, it is. And I think that's, I think that's um, part of the problem, Timbo, is that it's, yep. it's developing at such a fast pace that – you know, the you get into a workflow using your favourite AI tools or whatever you're doing and a month later it's kind of irrelevant, you know. It's irrelevant. Mm. I know, mate. Mm. I know. And, and 
It is a problem already because I think one of the things, well, the main thing we want to do today is unpack what it means to get off the AI treadmill, mm. which is your phrase, not mine. Mm-hmm. But when you said it to me the other day as we were planning this episode, it made perfect sense because I think we are. We as small business owners are a bit stuck on it. You know, it, it, treading water, flapping in the wind a bit, it would appear chat GPT is what everyone's talking about still. Mm. But as you and I know, probably you more than me, this thing's so much bigger than chat GPT. It's just that they got first to market preference, so we're all talking about it, right? Yeah, well, I think so. I, you know, I, they built a really nice consumer product on top of a large language model, right? So, so yes. So, and, and it's interesting because I just want to debunk Chat GPT for a second, right? A lot of people think that. So, what Chat, what Chat GPT is like? It's like predictive text on steroids. All it's doing is completing sentences. Hmm. So, I just want you to think about this for a second. It's not. Don't rely on Chat GPT to answer lots of questions for you. Because all it's doing is taking what it's been fed and then completing sentences. And if you've used ChatGPT enough, we use it in the office. We use it all the time, and we and we have this saying now that oh, it sounds a bit ChatGPT-ish. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And if you've used it enough, you'll know what I'm talking about. And it's because all it's doing is completing sentences, right? So, well, and, and and what you mean by that, and you you'll describe it better than me, Troy. But it, it's basically looking for the next best word. Correct. To put in that sentence. Correct. Right? That's right. Based on it learning a lot of the internet. So it's not thinking yet. That's right. It's not. It's not It's not artificial intelligence, right? It's not artificial intelligence. It's It's just um, completing sentences like predictive text would on your phone. Or if, you, if you've been using Google Docs for any time, you start writing a sentence in Google Docs and it tries to auto-complete the sentence for it. It's the same thing, but it's on steroids. It's a large language model. And... So the – and the other thing that's happening with AI is the AI bots are, you know, like AutoGPT or um, Sintra Labs or, or there's a there's hundred of them that, that are coming out now that allow you to use ChatGPT with automations. So, you know, you can go to YouTube, take a transcript uh, of a YouTube video, have ChatGPT write a summary of that and then automatically post that summary to your LinkedIn profile as, you know, to promote the YouTube video. So these are just – it's basically predictive text and Zapier. Right? It's still not really AI in the true. Explain Zapier. Well, Zapier is an automation. It's a no-code automation platform where you can connect services to each other and do things in the middle, right? So you can say start with YouTube and then take the summary of that, uh, turn it into a, you know, 150-word summary and then post it to my LinkedIn profile, right? And so it just automates things. It allows you to automate things in the business. Um I think the challenge with most people that I see using AI and we kind of went down this path very quickly and then stopped because my, no one has a plan for how to, no one has a strategic AI plan. Now, I, I believe there are huge benefits to AI, which we can talk about, and I think there's a philosophical challenge that we're going to have with AI, which is, you know, I'm happy to talk about as well. But I think all of it starts with, you know, what which part of the business should you be using AI in now and which part and what should you leave till next year or next quarter, right? And, and without creating further anxiety amongst business owners, Troy, I've just been at a Microsoft event this morning where they launched um, Microsoft Copilot and showed how AI is integrating into all the different aspects, which I'll, I'll, I'll talk about some of my key takeouts and concerns from that later in this chat. But the big one, mate, and you, you sort of touched on it then, is that right now we're in this crazy window of time mm. where there is really an opportunity for a small business to create a genuine point of difference. Mm-hmm. How? By embracing various parts of AI that are going to allow that business to move quicker, to be smarter, to be more communicative, to improve their customer service, to negotiate better prices with all these things that AI is going to do in a heartbeat that was taking us humans a long time to do. Mm -hmm. So one thing I really picked up from the the event this morning was that if you, the business owner, are willing to sit down and listen to stuff like this and, and roll the sleeves up and go and spend a day away on your computer investigating all the different aspects of AI, then, geez, mate, you are going to be in a pretty good spot. Mm. And I think that uh, you, you, you're right. I think, you know, we're using, we're using AI in recruitment 
we're using AI in sales and marketing. So we're using AI bots to qualify uh, leads and set appointments for our sales team. We're using AI to write job scorecards for our new hires. We're right using AI to build spreadsheets. Google Duet is a tool now that integrates with all the Google Suite products. You can basically tell it what you're trying to do and it'll just automatically design a spreadsheet for you. Google Duet. Right, with all the formulas and all the drop downs and all the status updates and all the colour coding and all the conditional logic, it's all done, <laughs> right? I mean, what would take you a day is done in, you know, like 10 seconds. It's ridiculous. What would take you a day or you just chose not to do it. you chose it not to do ridiculous. it. And th this is the thing that I think, you know, a lot of people have been saying AI is going to replace jobs. AI is going to allow small business owners to do things they've never been able to do before because they haven't had the time and they haven't had the resources, right? So AI is going to allow small business owners to do what they've never been able to do before. And the question that I think is going to come up for a lot of people, and I'm seeing this happen already, and so my audience are agency owners, small business, web design, SEO, digital marketing agency owners, and a handful of coaches that I work with as well. What I'm seeing most people doing already is using AI to free up their time and then spending that free time to go and explore more AI stuff to produce more <laughs> shit that people don't need. And the smart ones, <laughs> right, are using AI to free up their time and then using that time to sit and think and call customers and have conversations and get feedback. I really hope so, mate. Right. I really hope they are because they are. that's the, another the minority the, the smart ones the minority the minority are, smart right? ones because that's another thing that I took away from this morning is that our time is becoming freer right is it, who would have ever thought to say that that's right in in a world where we're all so freaking busy where time is the greatest of currencies and, but but what I do hope mate is that and I this is a real wish I have for anyone listening and anyone in business is that they use some of the time they're making up not to find out how AI can further create more time, but at some point draw a line in the sand mm -hmm. and go on a holiday. Yeah. You know, a bit of self-love. Yeah, yeah. You know, a bit of go out and enjoy, smell the roses because we're all working our rings off. So I do, I, I hear what you're saying. It's it's self-perpetuating though that, oh, geez, I've just saved a day doing that. That's right. I'll go and fight, you well, know. So because, so let, let me, there's two things, two things I'll quickly mention and we can unpack it in more detail, but here's the kind of the fork in the road for me, right, is, most people, and I know this has got nothing to do with small business, big marketing, but most people can't sit still for longer than five minutes and look at a blank wall and not move because if they do, your subconscious starts throwing up your life in front of you like a bad film and there's a, <laughs> there's a graveyard full of unresolved wounds that you haven't dealt with and that's pretty confronting. So most people just busy their time doing more meaningless shit, right, which is like in this case would be like exploring more AI stuff, right? Like, and that's why entrepreneurs are really happy to, you know, work 80 hours a week because they, they don't want to sit still. So there's that. And I think that's an art. Being able to just sit in your own discomfort is an art. And I think it's a life skill that's really worth mastering, right? Mm -hmm. The second- Well, it's one that's forgotten. Yes, that's right. Because we, we used to do we it. We used to do yeah, it. Second? That's right. The other, the other point is that by not working- you're, there was, there's a, I can't remember his name, but there was an English psychologist in the 1900s that he was one of the founding members of the London, London School of Economics, I think it was, and he he codified the creative process, right? I might bore you with the details. There's four stages. Stage two is the important one. It's called stage one's ideation. Stage two is incubation. This is the most important one. And the it, it comes down to this. If you stand in a room full of people and say, finish this sentence, my best ideas come to me when? In the shower. Correct. Number one answer. Survey says in the shower. If you said at work, survey says, but no one says my best ideas come to me while I'm at work. No one mm. ever. So here's here's the here's the kicker. Leave work early. Have a shower. And give yourself an opportunity <laughs> to have your best ideas. Because your best ideas are not going to happen while you're at work. Right? right? Go and sit in the hot tub. Go play golf. Go on a holiday. What if you had a shower? At your office. There you go. Well, I've got a shower at the office. So I come to the office, <laughs> I do a workout, I do exercise in the office, and then I go and have a shower, yeah. right? So by the time I get to work, I'm full of great ideas. And <laughs> within half an hour, they're gone. They're dead because yeah. I'm at work, right? Yeah. So yeah. incubation is really important. So use AI to free up your time and then use that time to incubate. I agree, mate. I, I, knowing this episode was coming up, Troy, I went out to my Facebook tribe and to my LinkedIn followers and just posted the simple question, how are you using AI in your business mm -hmm. and do you love it or do you hate it? Mm -hmm. um, if you could just um, give me the indulgence of a couple of sure. minutes. Um, I, I've summarised um, the outcomes from about 35 respondents. Did you use um, ChatGPT to summarise the response? 
Excellent question. No, I didn't. Uh, I know. I know. I'm absolutely. I did it myself, and I'm absolutely well. exhausted. <laughs> I've never used so much brain power in all my life. Here is how business owners right now in September 2023 are using AI in their business. It's blog posts, ideas or outlines or full posts, website page copy, sales letter copy, spell and grammar checks, searching instead of Google, which I think is interesting. Mm -hmm. Speeches, ideas generally, just starting off with a white canvas and looking for ideas. SEO metadata, interview questions, suburb profiles for trade businesses, coding, the writing of difficult letters. This is a fun one. There's a little example here, Troy. This guy um, got a request from a no one in the regional town where he lives asking for industry pricing. So he just didn't know how to, how to say no. So he handed it over to, to um, ChatGPT and the paragraph response was this, hi, Lisa, thanks for considering us for your work. I understand your position, but we have to maintain our, maintain our pricing so that we can offer our quality and reliability to our clients. We don't have any industry arrangements. We have also been in business for over 21 years and have been working relationships with many local builders who don't expect or ask for a discount for our services. Maybe if you're an ongoing client of ours, we could uh, work something out. I would consider it, but I'm in a position to, but I'm not in a position to offer discounting at this stage. Sorry. You know, so here's a bloody chatbot trying to figure out which words to go after the neck, not chatbot, chat GPT. Yeah. And that's a great response. Yep. Um, using it to break down costs when evaluating supplies, sequences and workflows for business tasks, mm -hmm. comprehensive product instructions, creating images, email subject lines, lead generation, meeting summaries and follow-ups, and rewriting tender responses to meet word counts. Wow. So it's great. Th there's a bit of a range there. Yeah. But it's bigger than that. Yeah. It's much bigger than that, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, yes, it is. I mean, the, because, because ChatGPT, as I said, they built a great consumer product on top of a large language model, right? They've, so they've got, so, you know, ChatGPT, most AI that you're using, if you're using text tools to produce copywriting or text, right, or letters or emails, then you're tapping into what's called the, the open AI database, which is a large language model. So it's just a, a whole lot of words really. And it's kind of been trained on how to write sentences. And there are a whole bunch of tools that use the open AI database. ChatGPT happens to be one of them made by the same company that have the open AI database. And so they just built a great consumer product, which just is a really easy, you know, text field that you ask a question and it gives you an answer yep. and you can just have a chat with it, right? That's why it's called ChatGPT. Mm. But there's a bunch of other tools that, that, play with the same language, the same database, but they have a different interface. And so one of them, for example, one is uh, Rev.com, right? So we use Rev.com. We have transcriptions of all of our podcast episodes and videos. We stick them up in Rev.com. It gives a transcription, which he's been doing for the last, you know, five or six or seven years. It's just released summaries. So you have your transcription of your video, which isn't very good to read, and then it uses the open AI database same thing that ChatGPT is built on to write you like a, you know, 200 word summary of that podcast episode, which is great. Awesome. Um, we're, there's a, there's a, there are tools that you can use to recruit. So there's a, um, there's a new platform called Holly Hires, which is unbelievable. So what it does is it writes a job description. You post it, it'll post it on your LinkedIn profile. And then it will respond to any incoming messages from applicants around that job and it will basically triage and qualify applicants before it puts them through to an appointment with a recruitment manager. Wow. Right? So it's basically hands-off done for you recruitment by an AI bot, which is a combination of the ChatGPT style writing and task management that works with the LinkedIn API to manage your messages in your LinkedIn. Because all of these, all of the software platforms – are built on a database and those da most of those databases have what's called an API, which is an application programming interface. And what that is, is it's basically a, a backdoor into the database that you can access and you can pull data out of that database and display it in, in your own interface. So if anyone uses social media scheduling software and you schedule your social media posts and then automatically post it to Facebook and LinkedIn, you are accessing the Facebook and LinkedIn APIs through that Sprout Social or Hootsuite or whatever you're using, right? So that's kind of the way it works. Now, if you couple that, the access to those databases with something like ChatGPT, you've got a really powerful solution that can automate 
your work, can automate a lot of your work, can automate customer support, can automate recruitment, can automate setting appointments with qualified clients, can automate, you know, there's a there's a fantastic tool called TaskAid, T-A-S-K-A-D-E. You tell it what type of project you're working on and it sets up a complete project plan for you with all of the tasks and dependencies, the dates, it will assign it to team members within two minutes, your entire project plan is done. That would have taken us three or four hours to do that before in Asana or ClickUp. It's done within a couple of minutes. So the question now is, well- What do you do with that time? What what do I do now with that time? (laughs) What what do I do? 100%. It's a really really interesting question that a lot of people haven't even thought about. They're they're just going, Mm. well, now I'm just going to do more work. Well, back to what I was saying earlier, I really hope we don't. You know, technology is meant to free us. Correct. You know, it, it, but so far we haven't been, as a human race, very good at that. No, we've been terrible at it. And so, because what happened with email? All of a sudden, instead of writing a letter and sending it to you and waiting six weeks for a response, I get a response within 30 seconds. So what happened is I just respond again and respond again and respond again. And now I'm checking email from six in the morning until 11 at night. Mm. I don't have to wait mm. six weeks. I'm writing more emails that no one needs. I'm receiving more emails that no one wants and I'm, I'm more burnt out than ever and I'm now looking at the rest of the world through these screen, through these devices. So history would tell us that AI is just going to consume more of our time, it's not going to free us up and it's actually going to cook our brains even more because we're going to spend more time automating shit that we don't need to automate on a screen looking at people that we don't even like very much to improve you know, to do whatever it is we're doing. It's a great saying by Clive Hamilton, you know, we borrow money that we don't have to buy shit we don't want to impress people we don't like. And AI is kind of a similar thing. It's like we're going to be using AI to do a whole bunch of stuff that we don't even need to do. And I just think it's because, one, people don't have a strategic plan in their business and how to use AI, and, two, people don't want to sit still because it's too confronting. Mate, some of the stuff that came out of this Microsoft uh, chat this morning, which is funny that I only got invited to it yesterday, so I wasn't sort of expecting to sort of come with this knowledge because I sort of come my my AI experience right now. I'm, I think we spoke about this six months ago, and I had Dr. Katrina Wallace on on the program a few weeks ago. We talked about AI. You know, uh, I'm glass half empty about it. She was glass half full. You're glass half full. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of negative stuff going on, but I've got to say, what I saw this morning was pretty mind blowing. So you talk about email, this new Microsoft product, and geez, you know, I should have got Microsoft to sponsor this episode. This is certainly not meant to be a Microsoft promotion, mm. um, but you know, this thing was this AI was going into your email. It was summarising your email. Mm, mm. It was identifying the priorities in the email. It was identifying any time when someone said, you know, you need to do this, and pulling out the action points. It was, um, it was able to say, oh, someone's asking you to go to such and such, they're on these flights, would you like me to book the same flights? And within a click of the button, your flights are booked. Mm. It was even if you couldn't attend a meeting on Teams because you're in another meeting, it could attend for you, it could record it, it could summarise it, it could again identify where you were asked questions or there are actions for you. It could even interpret the other people on the team's meetings body language Mm -hmm. and make some suggestions as to how they were reacting to certain things. Yeah. I mean, it was bananas. Yeah. Yeah. And Google so Google Duet AI is kind of their version of this, right? So got it. You can like so for example, you go to Google and so because we're a Google workspace um business. Me too. um, And so you go to Google Slides and you just basically describe the presentation you want and it'll build the slides for you. It'll generate the images, it'll write the copy, it'll lay it all out, right? Um, uh, Google Duet integrates with, you know, all their products, email, Google Sheets, Google Docs. And, you know, and again, and, and, you know, like if you just think about there's this really interesting interplay between humans and technology. My observation is, and I have to say that when you're holding a hammer, everything looks like a nail, right? So I'm seeing the world through a very particular lens at the moment, right? I've got two kids, that six and three, and this year we had some challenges. We had some health challenges with the kids that really kind of sent me for a, a bit of a wobble and I was 
I was really out of the business for a, a good part of probably the first six months of this year. And luckily I've got a great team and I've got a good CEO that were running the business. I've just really sort of come back in the last couple of months. Everyone's back on track now, which is great. But it was a real eye-opener for me that I want to be – I'm committed to being present for my family whenever I need to be, right, and my, and my friends. If I need to be there for my friends and my family – that's my absolute number one priority. Mm -hmm. And so if I can use if I can use technology to free up some time, that's great. That means I can leave the office earlier or it means I can do 40 minutes of guitar practice on the stage here like I did before I jumped on this call with you because I've got a, an event coming up in the States soon with our customers. We've decided that we're going to put on a secret gig for our customers in, in a big room. So there's a bunch of us rehearsing behind the scenes. I've got to do some guitar practice. So I'm using the technology to create a, a day that works for me, right? I, I, I just think people are going to get, and I'm seeing it, people are just going to get stuck using the technology to be more efficient, but they're going to try and do more with, and they're going to get overwhelmed by all the, all the things, right? So um, I think, I think, and I just want to fast forward, you know, a few months, because this is happening in America right now. It's not here in Australia, but imagine what's happening with search, right? The way that we interact with technology is changing fundamentally. So I've, I realised yesterday I'm not using Google search anywhere near as much as I have been. I'm using ChatGPT to have a conversation. And I was, I was like, surely Google have to be using this. They've got to be using AI in their search. Well, they are in America. It's, not, it's in America, India and Japan right now. It's not here in Australia. But the way they're doing it, I think, is backwards. But anyway, the way they're, I'm, sh I'm sure they know what they're doing. They've got 25 years of data. Right? Google's 25th birthday today. They turn 25 today. They've got 25 years of data. They've got more data than ChatGPT. But the way they're doing it is you search for, you know, recipe for chicken soup and the, it'll give you the search results. But above the search results, it gives you this big section up the front where yes. all the videos, recipes, podcasts and blog posts are all collated from all different sources into a best practice, right, summary and here's what you need, and then you can click a button that says ask a follow-up question. I imagine the way I want to use technology is I want it to ask me clarifying questions before it gives me an answer. So if I say I need a recipe for chicken soup, I want it to ask me how many people I'm catering for, if anyone there is a celiac, uh, if um, there are some vegans or vegetarians coming, what do I do with them, right? Right. Um, is, am I just making soup for my sick wife? Is that why we want chicken soup? Or, you know, like, do we want organic? Ask me some question. Do we want it hot and spicy, mild? And then give me an answer, one answer, not a search result page full of 15 irrelevant stuff, one answer based on my the clarifying questions that I've answered. Which And at the moment you have to tell ChatGPT, the way I prompt ChatGPT is I say, in a minute I'm going to ask you to do X, Y, Z. Before I do that, Ask me some clarifying questions. So this is really important, and this came up big time this morning, which is that interplay between human and AI is everything, and that's about prompting. We know one of the new, the, the, the big new jobs in the world is a, is a, a prompting engineer mm. or an engineer prompter prompt or something engineer, like that. Yeah. Prompt engineer, um, and it's that ability to iterate once you get going with the whatever AI you're mm. using. Yes, meaning you know. Like and I've done exactly the same where before I ask it any questions or before I ask it to do anything, I tell it, I give it some background, I give it a brief, yes. and then I say, hey, listen, you don't, literally, I literally say, you don't need to do anything here, but just tell me do you understand where I'm at or what I'm saying or what I'm proposing. Mm. And, it, and it, obviously then it learns over time what you're about, you know, so I've done that with my podcast. I don't have to keep telling it what my podcast is about. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you, you, like you say, you, you sort of iterate and you prompt it. And that's a skill. But but it's, it is it is a skill, but it's also, I was thinking about that this morning, which is, it's just the same as talking to a person. That's right. You know, no different. That's right. If I want to tell you something, I'll give you a bit of background. Context. And then you'll say something and go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'll iterate a bit, you know, this or that. And yeah. I think that's how we got to treat it, which is yeah. bloody scary because I actually find myself even typing into the chat GPT box things like, Please and thank you. Yes, <laughs> yes. And I'm thinking, my, my little my little mind's going. Oh, I'll probably get a couple of bonus points for doing that, <laughs> like like it cares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so one of one of the I'll just give you another example of of um, you know we're onboarding some new staff here and we've got lots of 
uh, we have tons of content in this in this business, and the way that we are uh, traditionally the way that we've inducted new staff members into our content is kind of got on a call with them and tried to give them a download, right? Well, in the process of figuring out how to make this more efficient, I found this tool called Learning Studio AI, and I literally can give it a prompt. Uh, it's a course creation platform, right? I literally give it a prompt and say, um, um, you know, make me a make me a course about how to start a podcast from scratch. And within two minutes, it's done. It's all the, the content is unbelievable. Now it's not super opinionated, right? It's it will ask you if you want beginner, intermediate, advanced. It'll ask you if you want a quiz and you want a conclusion and a wrap up, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you can then, of course, add your own images and videos, which we will eventually do. But what previously what would have taken me a couple of hours has taken me less than two minutes, right? And so this is, I think, that the 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 opportunity for small business owners is to, as I said, do things they've never done before, right? There's a another platform called Opus, which is coming, where you'll literally be able to tell it what video you want and it will produce the video for you. How? It, 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 it just does it. Like, no, you know, not, not how. That's a dumb question. It's like asking how a car works. But, like, <laughs> when, you say, when you say it goes and produces the video for you, it's grabbing imagery, it's creating imagery f- from all over the place. I mean, you... I mean, I'm, you're not going to be able to appear in it. No, it'll, so cre- it'll, like it'll create. Shot video. Yes, that's right. It'll create like you know, show me, uh, show me a, a a church in a field with the the trees blowing gently in the wind, and uh, you know, a, a, a wedding couple standing in front waiting to to go in, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, but we're not that far away from then saying, okay, um, you know, after five seconds. Um, you know, give me a drone shot as if the drone's going over the church, right? I mean, that's only, we're, not, we're not far away from that at all. And so what this means is that small business now has an opportunity to produce and create things that it hasn't been able to do in the past. So you and I are podcasters. We have a lot of equipment to make ourselves sound nice, right? There are now tools where you could essentially talk into your phone and upload an audio file into one of these podcast tools, of which there are many, dozens, hundreds. Yes. And it will make you sound like you're in a radio studio. It's ridiculous, right? And I'm an audio guy. Like, I know how compressors and <laughs> yeah, EQ yeah. work. And yeah. that job's done now. It takes a couple of seconds and it sounds like you're in a radio studio. And so there's – so, one, I think there's no excuse anymore to, to not be uh, creating helpful things for your customers. Mm-hmm. And, two, uh, there's no – there's, you know – Again, just to go back to that question, what are you going to do now that it's two o'clock in the afternoon and your job's done? Mm. Right? You're going to go home and or volunteer at a local charity, or because I tell you something, you'll learn more about your business if you spend a couple of hours a week volunteering at a local sporting club, being an assistant coach for no money. You'll learn more about your business doing that than if you look at the computer for the rest of your life trying to automate things with AI. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I think I know what you mean. Like, get out, get out from behind your comfort zone and go and talk to some people. Yeah, and, and also just give you your know, subconscious, your, give your subconscious thinking. an opportunity to do the filing that it needs to do. Mm, mm. Right? Yeah, you, yeah, you never yeah. solve a problem by staring at a computer. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Gee, mate, just hearing you talk, then we are just—it's such early days, and we are such on the precipice of you know. Someone was talking about years this morning. There's no such thing as years anymore. Not in this world, not in this space. I mean, I'm a coach, right? And my value is in, I think, th- business models are going to be disrupted. Yes. Especially if you're a service provider, right? I mean, don't even get me started on 3D printing and AI because, I mean, I- I'm just looking forward to the point. I'm looking forward to the day where I can just print my own batteries when they go flat, just print a new battery, right? Like it, there's a whole bunch of environmental, economic, technological and social reasons why technology I f- I feel like in my life there was the internet and now there's this mm. I think th- I feel like this is the biggest innovation since the internet and we it's just no it's just starting right and as a coach my value is as a service provider is actually working with clients one on one and the 
and, and not not kind of answering, you know, redundant questions like where do I get access to this training or where's the workbook for that or where's the download for this, right? A robot can do that and we're training robots to do that. We're training robots, we're training chatbots to interface with our clients so our clients can basically have a self-help vending machine to ask it questions and it will only answer those questions based on our company proprietary documentation, right? There's a tech stack that allows us to do that. And so what that does is that frees- There's a what, a text what? There's a tech stack, a technology stack, stack. that allows me to, to do that. Um, and what that allows me to do then is to is to talk to a client knowing that I don't have to answer any of those questions because they, they've, they've already got the answers to that. And what I can do then is I can help them understand how to take this information that we've given them and apply it to their unique situation, right? And so any service provider- if you're doing repetitive things for multiple clients right, and you're not thinking about how you can spend more time with your high value clients, then I think you're done. Like I, I just think there's no value in doing, hmm. you know, the repetitive work like setting up a spreadsheet, for example, as a wedding planner, right? I mean, that, that's now done in two minutes. That's done. There's no value in that anymore. There's absolutely no value in it because I can do it myself in, in a couple of seconds. So, I keep going back to this, you know, the opportunity is for the humans to be human. And we spoke about this a couple of weeks ago when we were kind of talking about this is the thing that the robots can't do and the thing that AI I don't think will ever be able to do is to have empathy and to to provide that human connection and that human experience for your customers. And sorry, Siri's talking to me. That's a bit weird having an AI conversation. <laughs> funny. Serious, just do, do you really about. believe that that it won't? They won't have empathy. I don't. I don't. I don't. I, I think we can teach. I think they can fake empathy. I think they'll pay us lip service, but they can't have empathy because they can't feel. They can't feel. Listen, if I if I take you back, and which I'm not going to do here, but if I took you back to a moment in your life where you were grieving for some reason, and I asked you to replay that memory in your mind, right? Most Last time I said goodbye to you, mate. Well, there, there you go. Chances are most people that go through this exercise will end up with tears in their eyes mm-hmm. right? because mm-hmm. the, the brain doesn't, can't distinguish memory from reality. So it, 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 the brain kind of goes, well, I, I'm, it, it's happening again. I'm experiencing this again, right? I had to put my dog down about six weeks ago and if I think about that, we had it for 14 years, if I think about that long enough, I'll probably choke up. Mm-hmm. So, like, why is that happening? Why is the body responding? Because the brain doesn't know the difference between a memory and reality. The brain also doesn't know the difference between imagination and reality. A memory is in the past. Imagination is in the future. It hasn't happened yet and the memory is not happening right now either. So the brain can't distinguish, right? Yeah. And so if you sit with someone and hear their challenges and have a real human connection with them, you can provide you if you hold space for them you can provide something for them that the robots will never be able to provide mm-hmm. and i think that and you said this before like you know we used to spend time pontificating and smelling the flowers and staring at our navels and then the internet came along we became the knowledge worker we went to work in offices we put our kids in schools and that's how we've been for the last 70 years, right? Isn't there isn't isn't this an opportunity to let the robots go to work for us and get back out in the fields and be village people, right? I know most people <laughs> listen to this going, Jesus Timbo, what have you done here? <laughs> Who is this <laughs> nutcase? Right. Mate, you can't stop the music. Right. <laughs> and <laughs> and you know, Ariana Huffington, if you want to have a meeting with Ariana Huffington, you have to go for a walk with her. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of people think that's crazy. It's a great idea. It's a great idea, right? I, I, I run group coaching calls with our customers and a few of them have started appearing on Zoom and they're sitting outside in the park nice. on their laptop, tethering off their phone. I'm like, what are you doing outside? Oh, I just think better if I'm outside, right? Hmm. There's people on treadmills on, on Zoom calls. The, the future of work is, is, is changing rapidly and the future of work is not going to look like how it has for the last you know, 70 years and certainly the last 30 years since we've had the internet. The future of work is very different. COVID sent us all home. There's all this commercial real estate in the city that's empty, right? It's going to be sold off pretty cheap and turned into who knows what, hopefully public space and green spaces. 
mm-hmm. uh, and and we don't need the, we don't need those structures anymore to to get effective work done. We've proven that, and the AI, and AI now is proving that we don't actually need to be tapping keyboard keys on the keyboard and clicking mouse buttons and pushing pixels around the screen to get work done either, right? And so I think the big challenge, and I know this is a philosophical conversation, but I think the big challenge for the human race is if we're not doing that stuff, what are we supposed to be doing? And I think a lot of people are going to be confronted with, well, how do I add value if my current, I'm telling my team, find robots to put yourself out of a job. Come to me at 10 o'clock in the morning and go, mate, I've got nothing to do. Great. Now you're valuable to me as a business owner because we can sit and think. Well, hopefully that's the case, mate. Hopefully that really, really is the case. And if we have to ask AI what we need to, you know, if we if we give AI tasks and say, wow, you've just saved me eight hours, then ask AI, what do I do? <laughs> what do I do now? Yeah, the pro- <laughs> you know, and and I just think at the moment AI, you know, the robots don't know, you know, because it's a it is a confronting thought and a confronting conversation to have because yeah. most of us get a sense of self worth and our identity is wrapped up with going to work eight hours a day and working hard and putting in a hard day's work, right? And then and 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 that that structure I think is 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 going to fall apart, right? Well it'll be about putting a putting together a smart day's work, not a hard day's work. Which it should have been at the start anyway. Yes. You know, but hard work is, you know, more talked about than right. smart work. And who happens. and you know, it's 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 I remember you know, when we, we moved house this year and went through everything with the kids we were going through, and it was, there was one Tuesday at 10 o'clock. I was like, I just don't need to go to the office. And my builder wasn't at the house that day. I had the house to myself. The kids were in school. My wife was at work. It was 10 o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon. I dropped the kids off at school. I came back home. I'm like, I was walking around the kitchen. I'm like, I don't know what to do with myself. So we had a new hot tub put in the backyard. I went and sat in the hot tub. <laughs> Mate, the guilt I was just that say, I felt oozing sitting in the hot tub at 10 o'clock on a Tuesday morning. <laughs> Right. Now, I do some of my best thinking in the hot tub. I'm in there a few nights a week. If it's a calm night and there's no rain, I'll go and sit in the hot tub at 9.30 for an hour before I go to bed and just I can't work, right? I'm not on the internet. Mm. I just sit there and think and look at the stars and look at the moon, come up with some great ideas. You like sitting in the hot tub when it's raining? Um, Well, uh, I I haven't haven't been there yet. My wife loves Mm. it. She loves being in the pool or the hot tub when it's raining. But um, Let's not go there, mate. It's too much information. (laughs) Troy, Troy, um... Just if, if we were to the, pull this back to we talked about getting off the AI treadmill, yeah, which is not we don't mean don't not use AI, no, 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 but but start to think smart as business owners about how to use AI beyond writing a blog post, beyond going to Chat GPT and getting an instruction manual done. Yeah, you've mentioned a few websites like Learning Studio, Holly Hires, Task Aid, Google Duet, Opus. Mm-hmm whole lot of websites and, and things to look at, bright, shiny objects, some might say, another distraction. Mm-hmm. What would you say to a business owner listening that's like, okay, what, what should I do? Where should I go? Do you take a day off and just explore all those things and go, oh, geez, hiring's taking a lot of my time. I reckon Holly Hire might be a, a great place. Where would you start? Well, I think, I think you should take a day out of your business probably every three to six months anyway. Yes. Um, but I think I don't think you should take a day out and explore AI. I think you should take a day out and if you don't, like the whole, you know, if you don't have a plan in the business, then you don't have a plan for AI. And so, and it's really boring. It's really boring. And I spent years not having a plan in my business because it was, because it's really boring. Mm. And, mm. you know, it's it's not fun. There's no dopamine hit. It's not sexy at all, right? Um, but if you don't have, so we're running quarterly sprints. We have quarterly plans. And if you don't have a quarterly plan, the first thing I think you need to do is sit down and figure out what the priority is for the next quarter. It's a good time to do it. It's the end of September. So we're going into the last quarter of the calendar year here in Australia. What is the plan for the next three months? And the way that the way that I do this is really simply is, you know, what are the numbers that we're measuring? It's usually around revenue, gross profit, net profit, team engagement, team happiness, customer satisfaction. They're really good numbers to measure to begin with. And then break that down and say, okay, which number do we want to move this quarter you can't move all of them at once. That's a big mistake that a lot of people make because they try and mm-hmm. improve every part of the business in a three-month period. You can't do it. So do we need to improve revenue, gross profit, net profit, employee engagement or customer satisfaction? Which number or two do we need to move this quarter? And then ask yourself, what are the three big rocks, if you like, the three big projects that we want to undertake that are not business as usual, 
So working on the business, what are the one, two, maximum three things that we want to get done this quarter that are going to move those numbers in the right direction? Let's stay focused on that and ignore everything else. Then we can explore which AI tools might help us help, improve yeah, efficiencies, yeah, right? Yep. And yep. if you want a great list of where to start with AI, just go to producthunt.com, which is a, a website that showcases new software products that are launched and they have a whole AI section and you can just explore, you know, AI for recruitment, AI for lead gen, AI for, you know, content marketing, AI for employee engagement, AI for customer satisfaction. Mm-hmm. You know, just just explore the tools based on the project that's important this quarter to move the numbers that we've decided that we're going to move in advance because most business owners are reacting to opportunities that come across their desk because mm-hmm. they haven't made a decision in advance what they're going to focus on. And if you yeah. don't make those decisions in advance, you just get distracted by the shiny objects, right? Mate, I love that. That is just a, a, a great answer to a question that, you know, I was hoping you'd talk about AI, but it's like it's not about AI. It's about the business. That's figure right. out what you need to do with the business and then figure out what AI, yeah. how AI can, can help you move forward with that. Yeah. I think that's something to sit back and reflect on. And uh, that's enough, mate. I think we should check in. Every uh, every six months on this, buddy, and just Love uh, to. see where it's at. Because it's going to be a vastly different conversation. Yeah. I wonder how different it will be in six months' time. We'll all be a bit more familiar. We'll all, have, you know, spread our wings beyond Chat GPT. We'll be all using it in various different ways that we just didn't even expect. Mm. Agencymavericks.com. That's it. That's where it's at. If you go to a digital marketing agency, that's where it's at. Hey, hey, thanks, Troy. Thanks, Timbo. See you, mate. Love your work. There you go, team. Troy Dean and myself talking AI. Oh, boy, what an incredible world we are living in. I think it's going to even get more incredible in the in the days and weeks ahead. You'll find all the links to the Troy mentioned in the show notes for episode 653 over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com or I'll drop them in the show notes in your podcast app. Plus a link to my LinkedIn and Facebook posts where listeners had the chance to share how they're using AI in their business. You'll see a lot more detail there, quite interesting in itself. If you'd like to join the discussion about this episode and about AI in general, then join the Small Business Big Marketing Tribe on Facebook. It's free and it is helpful. I'll see you on the inside. All right, another big episode. Tick. It's time for you to take action though on what you've learned. Because ideas remain exactly that without action. You know that. Please support the work I do for small businesses by joining my small business owners membership over at patreon.com forward slash marketing podcast. I'd appreciate it so much. You'll find a free seven-day trial for the silver tier as well. No obligation. Next week, you and I meet a self-confessed whale and dolphin nerd who, with no interest in health and fitness, started an online health and fitness business. That, in its third year, Turned over $6 million. Great story. And he shares it, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. If you enjoyed today's ep, please hit the subscribe button on your favourite podcast help. It does help help with me, uh, my rankings, not with me rankings, my rankings. Uh, and you'll also find 652 more chats with successful business founders. Big thanks to Sam Heathcote for stitching this marketing gold together and to our in-house rock star, Lockie Dolly, for the music bed, who also happens to be Australia's leading expert on the Hammond organ, just in case you're wondering. Most importantly, a big thanks to you for making the time to tune in. Hugely appreciated. May your marketing be the absolute best marketing. Bye for now.